We've had a lot of people talk to us about a slowdown on Wall Street. Shouldn't be a surprise after the kind of year that we've just seen. What do you expect? Well, Matt, thanks for having me on the show. Appreciate uh, being here. Uh, it's been an extraordinary year, 2021, in terms of uh, M&A activity. And as we look out into 2022, uh, I think all the ingredients are there for further continued high levels of activity. Um, corporates, uh, board CEOs uh, are looking out in the world and seeing disruption everywhere. They're seeing technology disruption that is impacting their businesses. They're seeing a search for and a need for growth. Um, and they're seeing disruption beyond uh, technology in terms of ESG and energy transition and deglobalization and supply chains. And all of those things um, can be dealt with um, through uh, the M&A toolkit. Um, being on your front foot and really making sure that you're positioning your company best for those disruptive elements, I think is still going to continue to be top of mind as we go into 2022. And in addition, we've seen a tremendous explosion of private equity activity. By our estimates, private equity now is making up approximately half of the M&A market. And given the vast amounts of capital private equity is raised, uh, we think private equity is going to be continue to be a major driver of M&A activity in Navid, 2020 and beyond. Navid, it's Ed Hammond. I, I got to ask, look, you've obviously seen lots of M&A cycles come and go. I'm interested in this one where we're at this point where, look, companies are obviously doing deals, private equity is doing deals. I wonder from where you sit, how much of that is being driven by just the realization that the window is still open, but it may not be for much longer. So let's rush to get something done now before it closes. And I think a lot of what's driving the market right now is, is more structural than it is cyclical. As I mentioned, all of these disruptive elements are going to be with us for a long time. The vast amount of capital private equity has to deploy. I don't see that stopping anytime soon. Uh, also, you know, the environment, uh, as you point out, is, is good for M&A right now. We have stock market at all-time highs. We have low interest rates. And even though people are worried about inflation, we still don't see that impacting M&A volume. So, I think the structural elements are there, and I think the environmental factors continue to be there. What about the uh, liquidity? I mean, if people are willing to pay $50,000 for a Bitcoin, doesn't that show you that there's a lot of excess in the system? Well, I think a lot of what you're seeing in the crypto market and with the meme stocks is, is more retail driven, and certainly that's having an impact in some of those markets and with some of those stocks. But a lot of what's really driving the M&A market today are the structural elements, uh, what's happening in boardrooms, what CEOs and boards see as they look out into the landscape, and, and what's happening with private equity. Now, let's talk about the firm for a second. Obviously, we are in this moment where COVID seems to be sort of back with us, at least for a while. What is Molis doing to get people back to the office, and how does 2020 to look, sorry, in terms of having staff back in either sort of in a full capacity or in a semi-full capacity? Thanks for the question, Ed. Look, starting um, around the fall, we've been encouraging our bankers globally uh, to come back into the office as much as possible. We do think uh, being together is critical for talent development and collaboration and, and for culture. And those are you know, fundamental elements for our firm. Um, uh, and as we roll forward, I do think there'll be enhanced flexibility. We are looking at uh, one day a week where you know, bankers are free to, to work from home. And certainly as we're getting through the tail end of, of hopefully the tail end of COVID, um, we're, we're, um, you know, while we're encouraging people to come into the office for folks who still feel uncomfortable staying from home, we're providing uh, some flexibility there. But we do think it's critical ultimately for people to come back and for us all to be to get together as quickly as possible. Again, we're all hoping it's the tail end here, Navid. Uh, we're just seeing headlines cross the terminal that the White House is hoping to announce uh, its remaining Fed picks before the holidays. This from an interview with Jen Psaki. Of course, we expected this, and the most important um, pick has already been confirmed. What does a more hawkish Jerome Powell mean to you? How important um, is, is it, and would a one or two interest rate hikes really make a difference? You know, look, I think it's really important for the Fed to, to manage the economy and manage some of the inflationary forces that we're seeing in a prudent and thoughtful way. Um, look, I have a lot of faith that the, the, the Fed chair and the Fed will continue to do that. 
And uh, I think history has demonstrated that, you know, a lot of those Fed policies have been uh, very positive for the m and market. So ho hopefully that will continue and, and hopefully that prudent management will, uh, will, will continue to create an environment for economic growth and for uh, further m and activity. Now, but just before we let you go, obviously, as one of your roles at the firm, you are at least somewhat responsible for helping hire the new talent into the firm. I wonder now where we have this generation. We're constantly told they don't want to work as hard. They want more flexibility. They want to be able to sort of transition more between careers. Uh, what do you tell them? What is the pitch hiring people into investment banking today? Well, look, I don't personally see a lot of our bankers uh, not wanting to work hard. We have an incredibly dedicated and loyal staff of bankers and administrative staff that work incredibly hard to bring the very, very best to our clients each and every day. I do think there is a push for more flexibility and, and we're doing our best to try to combine additional flexibility, but also recognize the importance of, of being together and collaboration and culture and, and trying to be practical um, as opposed to theoretical about what the right mix is there. I do think there is a mix there that will enable us to continue to attract and maintain the best of the brightest and still bring our best to our client base.